Welcome back. For now, we stopped looking for a 3n plus 1 loop and we switched to trying to prove that no loops exist. And as a start, we want to show that there's no circuit loops, which are loops that go up and up and up and then down and down and down with no extra gyrations. And last time, we built a chart of all the possible circuit loops. So here you can see down the left, we pick a number of 3n plus 1 over 2 operations that go up, and then across the top, we pick the number of one-half operations that go back down. So for example, this cell represents the circuit loop with three up operations followed by two down operations. And we can ask, what's the value of the bottom member of that loop? And in this case, it's 19 divided by five, which is not an integer. And in fact, in every one of the cells we see here, we would likewise get some fraction. So none of these are valid circuit loops, except for the two in the upper left-hand corner. But we can't check all the cells because uh, there's an infinite number of them and we can't just keep trying them one by one. So we need an airtight argument that for all cells, 3 to the x minus 2 to the x is never a multiple of 2 to the k minus 3 to the x. Um, so can we know that 665 is not a multiple of 295 without even checking it? So to do that, let's replace all the numbers here with their prime factors. Okay, now instead of 665, we now have 5 times 7 times 19. And instead of 295, we have 5 times 59. So now it's clear that this is not a multiple of that because this would have to have a 59 in it. So 59 is a spoiler for this cell. Now it turns out that the patterns of prime factors have tons of regularities on this chart. I was really amazed. So for example, take 5. So for odd x, 3 to the x minus 2 to the x does not have a factor of 5. But along the row, we have lots of 2 to the k minus 3 dx values that do have a factor of 5. So fact 5 is a spoiler in all of these green cells, meaning none of these circuits are valid. For example, what about the circuit with 9 ups and 6 downs? That's not an integer loop, and we don't even have to check it. Or take 7. It's a spoiler in all the blue cells. So one question we can ask is, does every cell have at least one spoiler? And we're going to come back to that in a future episode. So notice that here we're not looking at how big the numbers are, only at their prime factors and seeing whether something's divisible by something else. But look along the top row here. All these numbers are bigger than one. So how could one be a multiple of any of them? It's just not big enough, it's impossible. So we can rule out all these circuits on the first row without even looking at their factors or checking them in any way. So let's bring back the chart we had before we factored everything. Okay, so for 3 to the x minus 2 to the x to be a multiple of 2 to the k minus 3 to the x, it has to be bigger. And look, it's almost never bigger. Uh, only in these green cells does 2 to the k minus 3 to the x dip low enough so that it's smaller than 3 to the x minus 2 to the x. So we can rule out all the circuit loops except for these green ones. Unfortunately, there's still an infinite number of them to check. But we have a trick we can show that 2 to the k minus 3 to the x not only has to be less than 3 to the x minus 2 to the x, it actually has to be less than 2 to the k minus x minus 1, shown across the bottom here, which you can see is a much lower number. And it looks like 2 to the k minus 3 to the x never gets that low. Okay, so to do that, we need a simple idea, which is the greatest common factor. For example, the greatest common factor, 15 and 9, is 3. It's the biggest number that divides them both. And there's two useful facts about greatest common factor. Number one, greatest common factor of a and b equals b means that a is a multiple of b. So for 3 to the x minus 2 to the x to be a multiple of 2 to the k minus 3 to the x, then uh, this number has to be equal to the greatest common factor. And number two, the greatest common factor a, b is the same as greatest common factor of a and a plus b. So that lets us rewrite the greatest common factor here until we get down to 2 to the k minus 3 to the x equals the greatest common factor between 2 to the k minus 3 to the x and 2 to the k minus x minus 1. And that means that 2 to the k minus 3 to the x is less than or equal to 2 to the k minus x minus 1. And I wrote the 2 to the k minus x minus 1 values along the bottom. They're really, really small. So this looks unlikely that you know this would hold. And since it's so unlikely, maybe we could prove the opposite, that 
2 to the k minus 3 to the x is always bigger uh, than 2 to the k minus x minus 1. That would imply that this is never a multiple of that, proving no integer circuits. Okay, a few episodes ago, I mentioned the famous mathematician Alan Baker. He established in dozens of pages of dense transcendental math that the powers of 2 and 3 get further and further apart from each other down the number line. And he actually showed they get this far apart for some values, uh, actual values of constants C and D, which I don't know what they are, say 1 and 2. So if we believe that from Baker, then we can see that this 3 to the x uh, is going to outstrip the 2 to the k minus x very quickly. As long as x is bigger than 7, this second inequality holds. So as an example of this whole thing, take the circuit loop of length 16 starting with 10 up moves. 2 to the k minus 3 to the x is actually 6,000 something, which is a possible divisor of 3 to the x minus 2 to the x. Baker's loose balance says that number is bigger than 230, which we know is bigger than 63. And so if this always holds, then we can say no integer circuits. And okay, that's really great. Now, of course, I regret using a piece of heavy artillery that I don't even know how it works. I'm sure there must be a simpler way to solve this. And it's not clear that this method is gonna generalize to non-circuit loops. Uh, here we have just one beta for the circuit loop and we check if it's a multiple, but actually we have a whole stack of other loops to consider and we check if any of them are a multiple. So the greatest common factor trick is not gonna to continue to work. And in fact, one of the loops in the x equals seven stack is a multiple of negative 139, which produces the negative 17 loop we saw earlier. So we better watch out for that non-circuit loop lurking out there. Uh, we don't know about any other ones. So conclusion, there are no integer circuits, but let's not throw out our numerological charts just yet since we've still got our work cut out for us.